Welcome to Lab Luminosity Masks. This is a 10 channel workflow tutorial and I'm Lee Verist. I'll be your host for this little exploration of luminosity masks. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with this image and combine it with a lighter exposure to lighten up just the trees. We're going to blend this seamlessly using the B channel in an LAB uh, version of this document. Okay, so along the way, we're going to be learning uh, primarily, of course, about LAB channel masks. Um, but we'll also learn a little bit about LAB color editing and uh, layer blend modes. And using the burn tool to edit the mask. This is a very, uh, very cool technique and very useful in a lot of applications. And then we're going to end up with a little selective sharpening technique uh, exploration. So let's, uh, let's get ready. OK, so uh, I'm in Photoshop here. And uh, I have two uh, exposures of this landscape. They're taken a very uh, short period of time apart. This, I have a lighter exposure here primarily for the foreground, and then a darker exposure primarily for uh, the clouds in the sky. And I want to lighten up the trees. Uh, and one of the problems we, we encounter is like it's very popular now to use luminosity masks, and we usually get those from the RGB channels. So if I look around for, you know, if I wanted to isolate just the yellow uh, leaves in the trees, um, I would have a hard time finding a channel here that, that gives me a starting point for uh, the trees, for, for just the yellow trees. So we're going to get a mask out of this, um, but I'm also, you know, going to be masking all the branches and all that kind of stuff. And I really only want to isolate the yellow trees. So how, how do you do that? Well, the, the secret is not using RGB channels, but LAB channels. So um, I already made a, a, an LAB copy, but I want to show you how to do that. So we're going to we're going to make a duplicate of this image because we want to combine it with this one, and we want to isolate just the the yellow leaves uh, in a mask. So we're going to duplicate this document, and this copy is going to be an LAB copy. So I'll just go ahead and name that LAB. And so here's our new version, uh, a new copy of this document. We're going to change the mode, uh, image mode, and we're going to go to LAB. And the reason we're going to LAB is that we're going to, we're going to play around with these uh, A and B channels. Primarily, the B channel is going to have a strongest isolation for uh, the yellow leaves. And um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to amp up the contrast in those channels. I'll do that. I'm going to make a, a curves adjustment here. And instead of applying the curve in normal mode, we're going to go ahead and apply it in overlay mode. So we're really going to create a lot of contrast. And, but I don't want luminosity contrast, since I may want to use this later on uh, just for the color. So I'm going to eliminate uh, the luminosity channel from the blend. Okay, so how I'm going into advanced blend options, and you can do that just by double clicking in the empty part of this layer, or selecting here from uh, the flyaway menu blending options. So we're going to get the blending options here, and you see here uh, right now the blend is using L, A, and B. I'm just going to uncheck the L channel, and you can see now essentially what I have is just enhanced contrast in the A and B, which is giving me a lot more color saturation. Now just to check to see where we are with our, our channels, let's now look at the B channel, which now has a lot more contrast. Uh, but I can probably get even more contrast out of it. So here's the, the spikes represent all the tones that are available in the image. You can see that it doesn't really extend from black to white. Uh, it's mostly gray, and this is pretty typical of the A and B channels, which are uh, really representing just the color in the image. And the B channel is the sort of blue yellowness of the color. So lighter things in the B channel are more yellow. 
uh, which you can see the yellow leaves here, uh, pretty nicely isolated uh, against the darker uh, sky, which is darker colors are more blue. Uh, so we really have a, a good head start here where the leaves are almost, uh, the yellow leaves are certainly almost all white. So we're going to increase the contrast uh, quite a bit. I don't want to enter into the histogram area here because I don't want to create any clipping, although a little bit of white clipping wouldn't hurt because I'm just trying to isolate those uh, yellow leaves. So I'm, I'm placing my uh, exaggerated uh, contrast curve here uh, just to the edges of the mountain range here. And now we can look at the color. It's like radically amped up. It's a kind of unusable this way. Uh, but what we're primarily interested in is that B channel now. So we're going to use that B channel uh, to as a kind of the start for a luminosity mask. So I'm going to go back to my image here. This is going to be my base image, and I want to put the lighter trees on top of that. So I'm going to get my move tool here and drag that up to the tab for the other document. Wait till it comes forward. And I, I'm holding down the shift key when I do this. So that helps to uh, drop that layer right on top and, and uh, align it so that it's perfectly aligned and in registration with this other image. So I'm, I, I hold the shift key down. I bring my mouse cursor down into the image and let go with my mouse hand. And it drops that as a layer right on top of that document. So now they're, they're in perfect registration because it was uh, taken on a tripod and uh, uh, the camera didn't move between these two exposures. So there should be very little to do here to get it to, to line up. Now, I want to add a layer mask to this top layer because I want to reveal the darker clouds and, and some of the darker contrast around these uh, more yellow leaves. So I'm going to create a layer mask just by clicking on the layer mask icon. And I have now a nice white layer mask, so it's not hiding anything. But I'm going to add the LAB luminosity, that B channel luminosity, from this uh, channel into that layer mask. And the trick to doing that now, when I have two, dif two different documents, is to use apply image. So we're going to go up here to image apply image and we see this dialog so I've I've got that layer mask targeted you can see it's you know got little outlines around it so we know that it's targeted and I'm going to apply an image into that layer mask so I want to use my LAB copy and I want to use the B channel okay so I've got that B channel in uh, and uh, you can see what it's doing. It's darkening the sky so that we can see the underlying layer with a darker sky. And that's pretty good, but it's still, there are parts of this that are still getting too light, and I want to bring back all the darkness in that. So um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to edit the mask. So I'm going to view this in isolation, I'll option or I'll click on that layer mask thumbnail. So now I'm looking at the layer mask, which is exactly like the, the B channel uh, that we copied into that layer mask. And I'm going to take the burn tool. And what we're going to do, I'll, I'll amp this up to about 60 or so. Yeah, you know, it's not that important. But really important, I want to range... Uh, I want the range that the tool is going to work on to be the shadows. I want to darken the shadows. I don't want to darken the highlights. So I can darken the sky. I can take it all the way down to black here pretty quickly. And the reason I'm using the burn tool is that uh, I can control the range pretty easily to work just on the shadows. So when I get in here kind of behind these trees, um, you'll see I can't can't really make the, the white parts darker. I can only make the 
the darker area is darker and I'm going to try and burn this this is a cloud here um, and I'm going to burn into this tree okay, so you can kind of see it it helps to stay away from some of the lighter branches um, I'm burning now a fairly high uh, exposure there. Uh, and then if I wanted to get more subtle with this, this is actually a great technique for editing masks. Um, instead of using the paintbrush, trying not to, to paint over anything. Um, just going around and making sure that all the parts that I want to reveal from the underlying image are black. And I can come in now and change my uh, my exposure down a bit so it acts a little slower and I could kind of come in here and fine-tune the mask to bring out some more of that background and you can also do this while you're looking at the image so I'm going to go ahead and option or alt click on that thumbnail again to get us back to the color view and I can see here any parts of the the background that I want to darken so like in here I'm going to make sure that the sky behind these trees is as dark as it can get. Okay. Especially in here, you know, I, I just want to make sure that I see that by using the burn tool, I can't make the light parts of this mask darker. Only the darker, so the gray tones, I can push them towards black. So uh, this this area looks looks to me like it's pretty good. I probably don't need to do too much more editing of this mask. Okay, and you can kind of see how seamless that is. It really is just lighting up those those yellow leaves. Okay, now I am I think brightening the, this the green grass here a bit. So I'm going to just go ahead and mask that off with a gradient. So I'll get the gradient tool, have black in the foreground, and the gradient, uh, usually I use the second one, which is foreground to transparent. Uh, you could use, uh, if I used uh, this one, the foreground, you know, black to white, the foreground color and the background color, I would obliterate everything in that layer mask that I worked so hard to build up. So I always want to, if I'm adding to the mask with a gradient, I'm going to use this uh, this gradient, which is the uh, foreground to transparent. So then it's going to start with black here and then ramp off and be transparent so it doesn't destroy the rest of this layer mask. And I just want to darken this front area here. So um, I'll start here. I'm just going to click and, and, and sort of drag up and hold down the shift key to constrain it so that it's perfectly horizontal. And you can see I've brought back some darkness in that area. And I'm kind of liking the way the this highlight is separating. Uh, there's a, kind of a little valley here in this hill. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that in uh, to put some darkness back in there. Okay. And maybe, you know, maybe we'll strengthen that edge up a little bit so that it, you know, so now we have that highlight just playing across the grass just like that. And uh, I'm almost done, but I'm thinking, you know, perhaps I'd like a little more color saturation. And, and since I have an LAB document, I've already got like a, a, some serious saturation here. Let's take a look at this. Uh, of course, it's ridiculously saturated because of the way the that curve, that high contrast curve is being applied. Um, I don't really need this that saturation in the blue. So what I'm going to do is go back to my blending options here. I'll just double click on that little icon which shows that there are blending options applied. And I'm going to now change uh, how this layer gets blended uh, using the blend if sliders here. So I'm going to use the uh, B channel. And I'm going to use the, the black slider here. You can kind of see how the darker things, everything that's darker than medium gray is blue, and everything that's lighter than medium gray is yellow. Uh, so what we do is we'll just take that 
black slider over and put it right at 128. So now anything that is blue is not being emphasized in this uh, in this uh, curve adjustment in overlay mode. Okay, and uh, perhaps I'll take out also the green looks a little too electric. So I'm going to go to the A channel and take out things that are more green than they are red. Okay, so you can see that tamed that down a bit. And um, I'm actually liking the fact that these leaves have turned from uh, yellow to red because we've amped the, the, the saturation so much in the A channel that now they've picked up a lot of red color. And now we have some yellow color in the clouds, perhaps you know, maybe a little too much. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and edit the, the mask for the curve here. And uh, well, we'll just we'll just kind of you know what let's let's do this. I'm going to paint out uh, this saturation entirely. Okay, so anything that's got that yellow saturation, um, the blue is already blended out, so we can't uh, we can't see any extra blue saturation. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna mask off everything that's like too yellow in the clouds. And now I'm going to bring it back, but I'm going to bring it back all at once uh, gradually so I can determine how much color I want to bring back. And so what I've done here, I've got black areas in the mask. Uh, I'm going to run a, a levels command right on that layer mask. Um, so that's image adjustment levels, okay, or command or control L. And I'm going to take the output level. So everything that's black in this layer mask, I'm going to start lightening it up. And I'm going to look and see uh, when that yellow comes back, uh, when it looks OK to me, when it's when it's not. See, I think, you know, maybe something like that. So we're just bringing it back a little bit. OK, so now we're ready to flatten this. And it is still really pretty exaggerated, uh, the, the color saturation, the red uh, leaves here. But I'm going to drag this uh, kind of exaggerated color on top of this document right now. So we're going to go back to that LAB document. I use my Move tool again, holding down the Shift key and dragging up to that tab. It comes forward, drag down, and let go with your mouse finger, and it drops it right on top. Now, this is in normal mode. Uh, I can control this a lot better if I just put it into color mode. And so now I can't disturb the, the uh, opacity of uh, the, uh, or the, the luminosity, the light and darkness of the underlying layers, which we worked kind of hard to, to build up uh, just so. And uh, you can kind of see I've got you know, quite a bit of extra red now and I kind of like that it's it's pulling out uh, that sort of fall color thing but if I didn't if it was too much I can just bring down the opacity until it, it looks where it looks right okay so we've done some pretty complicated editing here let's just check and see how far we've come with this that was our, our base uh, image and then we brightened up the trees and added this extra color and uh, it's looking pretty good but now uh, now we need to sharpen this and if I if I zoom in here you can kind of see we're losing you know that some definition because I haven't done any sharpening in the raw process here I've left it uh, completely alone um, and we've done so much kind of uh, amping of the of the contrast and color in general here that uh, I don't want to I only want to sharpen the, the trees and I don't want to sharpen the clouds here uh, so we're gonna do a kind of a selective sharpen here so to have uh, a layer to sharpen we have to have the, the combined results of all three of these layers into one layer so the trick to doing that is to hold down the Option or Alt key and select Merge Visible. And that will place a, kind of a copy on the top that's, the, that's exactly 
duplicate of all three of these layers. Okay, and this copy we're gonna we're gonna sharpen. So before I get too uh, carried away here, let me let me label these layers. This is my color layer, and uh, this is the lighter leaves. Okay, and this top layer is going to be a, a, a sharpened layer, but uh, I'm going to rename those layers uh, uh, after I've performed my sharpen operation, and you'll see why. Okay, so this this layer, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it. We're going to zoom into uh, 50%, uh, and I'm going to go ahead here, you, just so you can see how, how the sharpening works. I'm going to go here. Uh, under filter sharpen and I'm not going to use smart sharpen I'm going to use unsharp mask now I, I'm using unsharp mask and I always kind of sharpen at 500 because uh, we can kind of see uh, how much we're increasing the grain here so this little grain uh, sharpening is controlled by the threshold slider and this is the big difference between this and smart sharpen smart sharpen does not have actually this kind of selective control over you know sharpening the grain uh, but I'm looking for sort of maximum uh, sharpening here and I you, sometimes I'll go sub pixel radius when you're in here really tight and you're really looking to just emphasize the very thin transitions Sometimes like 0.7 is a good kind of macro, micro radius. And I'm just checking to see that the outside parts of these trees are getting appropriately sharpened. And sometimes I have to like accept a little more noise and maybe we'll go up just a little bit. So I'm looking for maximum sharpness. Okay, it, it's all well and good uh, as it is, but the thing that makes sharpening look kind of fake, uh, especially in a situation like this where we have an, a sort of the tree is exposed against a planar background, um, you get this kind of super exaggerated white halos that show up around the. Uh, so we'll zoom in. You can kind of see little light halos here. So we're going to create some sharpening that we can control the dark and light halos separately. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. OK, this layer is going to be our light, our light halos, and this is going to be our dark halos. And the way we do that, I'm going to take, I'm going to turn off that top layer right now. I, I, I take the dark layer and we'll say darken. And you can kind of see what it's doing is it's just darkening. It's just darkening. And in fact, against the sky, this darkening effect is all we need to give the enhanced, the, the, the look of the enhanced sharpness here. When we add the lightning, and I'm going to take this and change the mode from normal to lighten. It's just like we had both of those layers on. And you can kind of see it's just, it gets just sort of too sharp, and we can reduce the opacity of that. Usually I, I take it down 50 or 60 percent, so the lightning is, is not as strong as the darkening. And in this case, um, I am not going to use any lightning for these darker branches. So what I'm going to do, zoom out a little bit here, uh, I'm going to mask off the lighten halos from the tree branches that are played against the sky. So we're going to get a, a black brush and paint with black where there, the light and layer, the light and sharpen is happening against these trees against the sky. Now in the interior here, I, I may want to have some of that lightning ef effect, but certainly not in these darker branches against the sky because I don't want it, I don't want it to look obvious 
obviously sharpened. Okay. And we can kind of zoom in and just double check and see. So I'll let I'll leave some of that that lightning effect happen inside here just a little bit. But I want to I, I just whenever there's a really dark branch against a, a lighter sky, I don't want to have any of that lightning show up. Just the dark and sharpen. Okay, so now we've got we're gonna select both of those layers, the light halos and the dark halos, and I'll put them in a layer group here. So I go over here to the, my flyaway menu and select new group from layers. Now this is my sharpen. That's my sharpen layer. Uh, that's two layers combined into this group and I can apply a layer mask to that. So what I want to do now is add the layer mask and make sure that I take off the sharpening from the top. So I don't want the clouds sharpened, so I'm going to just you know, paint in here to take that any sharpening effect, which is you know really just showing up as kind of a, a grain enhancement. So I'll leave the sharpening around the trees, but take it off the clouds so we don't see all that exaggerated grain. I still have the dark and sharpen happening on these tree branches, but not uh, on the sky itself. Now, just to check to make sure that I don't have any holes in my mask, I'm going to zoom out and then Option or Alt click to isolate the, the layer mask, and I can see yes, I got some holes here. So I'll just I'll fix those holes. This is a step. Uh, <laughs> In a way, this is a, a step that kind of separates the uh, men from the boys or the women from the girls. So uh, don't be a sloppy masker. Go ahead and isolate the mask and make sure you fill in your holes. I see this uh, mistake happening a lot. Okay, so now that we have that, the sharpening kind of masked and in place, now I'm going to decide how much is enough. And it's actually probably pretty good at, at full intensity, but sometimes, it, you know, if it seems like it's just a bit too much, you can reduce the opacity a little bit of the whole sharpen effect. And I'm, I'm trying to evaluate the sharpening at 50% because uh, that's sort of a, if you don't, if you zoom into 100%, you will tend to under sharpen because we, we need to sharpen these things for prints, not really for a web display. But if you zoom in at 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 a hundred percent, everything just seems like too too sharp sometimes. So um, you want to zoom out to fifty percent to decide if you've added enough sharpening. Okay, well, I I I think that covers it, and uh, um, we've done uh, quite a quite a bit of work here. Here's again seeing where we came. Here's our original, now the kind of enhanced and sharpened and enhanced color and uh, all that. Uh, so I hope this was uh, helpful and uh, keep on wrangling those pixels and now you know how to use LAB channel masks to do your luminosity masks. Thank you very much.